Many thanks for joining me on the newsroom. I am Jerusha Amaglo. One person fed dead while scores of vehicles got burnt in a tanker explosion that occurred in Abelkuta, the Egusei capital. The explosion, which reportedly involved a 33,004 laden tanker, happened to a brake failure as the tanker, which was coming from Shagamu Road, climbed the overhead bridge but suddenly lost control while descending from the bridge to hit motorcycles. The fire, which spread to a few offices around the place, caused panic as many motorists started making reverse to avoid being caught up in the explosion. And the Ando State Governor, Rotimi Akeredolu, has ordered its men to vacate all forest reserves in the state within the next seven days. The governor made the proclamation via Twitter, saying the order had become imperative due to the increasing incidence of kidnap cases in the state. Night grazing has also been banned by the governor, who says most farm destruction takes place at night and has, however, given a great period of seven days to those who wish to carry on their cattle rearing business to register with appropriate authorities. And the AKT state government has set aside a sum of $550 million for procurement of drones to boost security in the state. The state commissioner for budget and economic planning, Femi Ajayi, who disclosed this to journalists in Adoikiti, said that drones will help security agents identify hideouts of criminals and combat security challenges in the state. According to him, the Akiti State Government earmarked 58 billion naira for recurrent expenditures and 51 billion for capital expenditures in the 2021 budget. Now that's 17% increase in the 2020 revised budget of 91 billion naira. The federal government has dismissed speculations that COVID 19 vaccines coming to Nigeria contained microchips and would alter human genes. Executive Director, National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Faisab Shuaib, who spoke at the Presidential Tax Force and COVID 19 National Briefing, assured medications would not only protect people but also trigger an immune response to protect the bodies against the virus. Shuaib urged the public to disregard such representations from unverified sources and listen to medical experts for confirmed information. And telecommunication operators have submitted about 43 million national identity numbers NIM to the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, for verification. Now, this is in order to have registered with the respective SIMS subscriber identification models. Chairman of the Association of Licensed Telecommunication Operators of Nigeria, Benga Adebayo, who spoke on behalf of the telecom firms, make this disclosure. Now, this comes as the telecommunication company says they won't block SIMS with unlinked sub sub submitted NIMS as a deadline for the integration of NIMS with SIMS ends today, January 19, 2021. In international, at least 134 cars were involved in a series of crashes in Japan today when a snowstorm struck, killing one person and a dozen of others injured. The government said the crashes occurred on the Tohoku Expressway in the northern pre prefecture of Miyagi at around noon on the stretch of road about one kilometer long. The chief cabinet security, Kashonobi Kata, told reporters that rescue operators were on the way to help prevent more disaster and rescue lies. Meanwhile, parts of Japan have seen unusually heavy snows in recent weeks. In the world of sports, Electric the Athletics Federation of Nigeria has held athlete Ruth Usoro after she set a new Nigerian record in triple jump on Saturday in the U.S. Usoro leaped a distance of 14.28 meters in her first attempt at the Texas Tech Kirky Classic to set the new Nigerian record, erasing the 14.21 meters record set at 2017 African Games in Algeria. The 23-year-old went further to set the meet, the meet record, re winning the long jump event with a distance of 6.51 meters hours later. And that's all we have on our package. Thank you for staying with us. I am Jerusha Amaigo.